Hello class, welcome to 8.2, Multiply and Divide Rational Expressions. And those are our two uh, objectives in this section. Let's start with uh, multiplying rational expressions. Um, again, let's remember this is rational, so let me uh, recall that quickly. Ratio, right? It's a ratio of polynomials. So it's polynomial over polynomial. And so when we uh, try to simplify this, okay, remember that simplifying can happen only by factorizing. Okay? To simplify, I'll just say, we must factorize to cross cancel. Because these are polynomials, you even expect pluses and minuses in between them, between the terms. So you just can't cross cancel them without factorizing. So let's keep that in mind. And uh, uh, let's say you had two um, fractions, okay? P over Q times R over S. How do we multiply two fractions? Well, the rule is to multiply them across. So it simply becomes P times R over Q times S. You can simply shove them together as PR over QS. Okay? That's the same rule here. That's very comforting to know. You're just gonna apply the same rule. Just that, remember, we have to factorize when we have to simplify. So factorize in order to cross cancel. Let's look at the first problem. 2x over 3y squared times 6xy cubed over x squared y. So each of them are actually polynomials, but in particular, they are each monomial. Okay. This is also a monomial. This one is a monomial. This too. Monomial makes our life easy because there is no factorizing to do. So I'll just say monomial implies no factorizing. There's only one term. What would you factorize, right? Okay, that means you can directly write, multiply them across because you don't have anything else to uh, apply to this. We simply multiply them across to bring the two fractions together. Okay, I just multiply them across. But you have to now simplify it. So we don't factorize in the way we used to factorize um, um, using AC method, BC method, but we do factorize them in a way that they will simplify as y cubed could become y times y times y. So they, uh, they factorize so that there is no power on the top. And then 3y squared times x squared times y, right? Now again, look at that, the x squared and the y squared, they have powers, so we can't write them with powers, right? So we have to rewrite them with without powers. So y times x times x times y, okay? Now, um, when you, over time, when you get really well-versed with uh, these kind of uh, calculations, you can simply look at this as, say, like, let's, let's look at y cubed here, yeah, y cubed and y squared. So you can simply use the quotient rule, three minus two, and that gives you a y on the top, that y will cancel with the y in the bottom. You could do simplification quickly like that, you know, doing it more mentally. But until we get there, let's take it slowly. And if you recall under multiplying and dividing monomial section, we actually uh, try to group all the numbers together, all the x's together, and all the y's together. Okay. So I'm gonna show it that way just for this problem. And I like to put the x's close to where, they, where I see them on the top, just to keep it easy for, for cross-canceling. All right, now that they're in their very barest form, we can go ahead and simplify them. So let's work with the numbers. Three times one is three, three times two is six. So that's good there. The x's, well, they match, so they will cancel completely. And it's, it's, it's possible to do this because you have multiplication between them, right? If there was a plus or a minus, this is not possible. So we, get, we did uh, do the cross-canceling, and after cleanup, we see that this is just a four on the top and a one in the bottom, which simply makes it four. That looks lovely, isn't it? Now your uh, expressions have been simplified to produce a four. This is fun when you have monomials. Let's look at the next problem. Clearly, these are not monomials. You have a trinomial, binomial, and so on. So let's write this problem one more time.
x squared minus 9 over 6x squared. Okay, let's explore each one of them. This is a monomial. Yes, it is a monomial, which means no factorizing, right? So, so that we're good there. What about this one? This one is a trinomial. If it's a trinomial, you have three things, okay? You have either the GCF that you have to pull out, or you have to do the GCF plus the BC method, or you could do the GCF plus the AC method, okay? So out of these three, you can examine, is there a GCF to pull out? No GCF. Is uh, the co leading coefficient one? Yes, the leading coefficient is one. So you know BC method is the, um, the one to use. Let's explore this one. How many terms there? Two terms. That makes it binomial. If it's a binomial, they're trying to see if there is a special case. Okay, is this, um, um, can you split this differently and so on. So here I see a minus in between them and each one is a square, x squared and, three, and nine is three squared. So right there, you know, you're going to use a special product called the difference of squares. Okay. Remember, we're doing all this because we want to factorize them, right? Factorize means to put it like this. So that's why we are um, trying to find clues for each one of them. So we're just writing a little plan um, to, to each one of them. This again is a monomial. So no factorizing required. So we're good there as it is. All right, now it's time for us to go ahead and put them in uh, factors. Okay. So go ahead and um, uh, apply the tricks that the, the trick that we have uh, identified for each one of them. Okay, the trick for the first one is to leave it as it is. <laughs> okay. And for the bottom one, you're going to use BC method. So you're looking for two numbers. BC is the easier method, right? AC means more work. We have to do it in the margin. Um, so you have, you're looking for two numbers whose uh, product is 12 and whose sum is negative 7. You see the negative sum, you know that you're going to look for two negative numbers to give you a positive 12. So negative 4, negative 3 is the winner. And you got it right there. Okay. All right. And then um, let's come to um, difference of squares. <clears throat> there again, x squared minus 9 can be written as x squared minus 3 squared. So it's a plus b times a minus b, right? Maybe I could just write it here for you, a plus b times a minus b. So that would be x plus 3 times x minus 3, right? Because a b would be three, 3 squared, so the b is your 3. So you got that. And monomial, nothing to do with it. X squared, okay? Now you're free to shove them together to cross cancel. But you know, you could also keep it the way it is to cross cancel because you know that you're going to shove it um, in together anyway. But just for uniformity for this section, I'm going to just bring them all into one single fraction. Okay, but you can simply cross cancel, that's totally fine. That's why it's called cross canceling. And this is 6x squared. Again, uh, you can expand the x squared as x times x, okay? Uh, but um, I'm just also going to show you how we could um, do it slightly differently. So two times one. So I haven't re rearranged them. I haven't moved them around uh, for this, uh, just for a variety. Um, so you have two times one is two. Two times three is six. So you got that. X and the X squared cancels off to give you an X, right? Because you subtract the powers. Two minus one. The, the higher power is the bottom. So you're going to subtract from the bottom. So two from the bottom minus the one on the top. That's going to be x power 1 in the bottom. So I have an x there. Then I look for x plus 3. Now this whole thing is grouped together, remember? Otherwise, you can't cancel them. If you have a plus or a minus, you can't cancel them. So if, they can, if you can cancel them as a group, then that's fine. They're grouped as factors. So there is no x plus 3. We leave that. x minus 3 and x minus 3 together appear identical. They are factors, so they can be cross-canceled. And that's about it. So let's go ahead and collect all that's left over. So we have an x plus 3 on the top that's left over. Then we have 3x in the bottom with an x minus 4 left over. Remember, you throw all the numbers in the single uh, letters in the front of the other factors, and that becomes your answer. So we basically simplified by multiplying the two given uh, rational expressions. So now talk, let's talk about dividing uh, rational expressions. Dividing, let's again uh, consider P over Q, but this time we're going to do division, R over S. How do you divide two fractions? So the rule is, keep the first fraction as it is, 
change the division to multiplication and flip the second fraction. So R over S becomes S over R. Okay, flip the second fraction. What you've done is you've turned the division problem into a multiplication problem. Now it's a breeze because you can simply multiply them across as PS over QR. Okay. So the rule again hasn't changed. What was true for numbers is also true for these rational expressions, just that we're doing the extra bit of factorizing to cross cancel and simplify. So uh, let's do a quick recap. Keep the first fraction as it is, change the division to multiplication, flip the second fraction. Okay. So um, here, that's what I'm gonna do. X plus nine over six minus X. I see the division. So I change it to a multiplication and I flip the second fraction. So I put the x minus six on the top and I put the x squared minus 81 in the bottom, okay? <clears throat> so I look up here, this is a binomial. Any room to simplify here? It's a binomial, but uh, it's not uh, any carrying any powers. There is no minus in between. It's not x squared and nine squared. I mean, uh, it's not an x squared with a minus. So you can see that it's a binomial, but there's nothing that you can do to simplify this. This is looking good as it is. How about this? This is also a binomial, two terms. Okay. There again, there's nothing to do. We got that good. We go here. This is a binomial, nothing to do. But I see a quick similarity between the one on the top and the one in the bottom. There's a six minus X, that's X minus six, okay? So here's the thing. Now, if I want them to match the same way because minus is not commutative, right? One minus two is not the same as two minus one. Because it's not commutative, we are going to now consider uh, how to keep them looking identical. If I have X minus six, I must have X minus six, right? In the bottom two. To make it identical, I have to do a little switch. Because all I have to do is, if I switch the signs, right? If I switch the signs, then I'm going to get, switch their places, basically. I will get um, them identical, right? So I will just say, this is the trick. To switch places, we need to factor out negative one, okay? That's a rule. So if I factor out a negative one, right? So if I pull out a negative one, that allows me to switch places, meaning switch signs, okay? So that will help us to handle them because we know that we can immediately make them look identical. Then I come down here, this is also a binomial. But here I have little promise because I see the minus in between them and I see the square, x squared. 81 is a perfect square of nine. So all that plays well. So it's a binomial where I could use the difference of squares. Okay, so now the plan is set. I'm gonna do x plus nine over. I wanna switch the sign, so maybe I could keep it here this way and do the switching up, or I could switch for the one at the bottom. But because I wrote a clue up there for the top, I'm gonna to switch um, places by factoring out a negative one. So I pull out a negative one and I simply switch places. So x minus six will now become six minus x, okay? Please understand, this is math. You can't simply switch them. To do the switch, I have to adjust it by pulling out a negative one because now if you if you for, if you distributed the negative one you'll get back x minus six okay to switch places factor out negative one okay. over all right so this is x squared minus nine squared so it is x plus nine times x minus nine okay because we took care of the division symbol in the beginning itself it's really not worrisome at this point so we could simply continue with the problem to simplify and cross cancel. Remember again, um, we can cross cancel right here, but when we um, want to bring them all together, we shove them together, um, we want to put x plus nine in parentheses and put the min neg times negative one times six minus x all over six minus x. Again, it was standing alone, so it didn't need a parentheses. But when you're shoving them together, they all need their parentheses. I don't have to put the dot in between, but uh, I want to do that so that uh, it is very clear that we are multiplying them out. x minus nine. Now we're ready to cross cancel. There's an x plus nine and there's an x plus nine, very nice. Six minus x, six minus x, that's also beautiful. So now we've got negative one on the top. That's the only thing left over. 
over x minus 9. Okay, that's what is left. Now again, uh, in your exercises, they may ask you to clean up because that minus can be absorbed in the denominator. So I'll just say 1 over, because this minus can go either up or down, right? So I'm just bringing the minus down. So this minus down is the same as having a minus 1, right? Yeah. So if it is a minus 1 that's factored out, you know you can switch places. So you can, you can go further and make this as 1 over 9 minus x. If you have factored out a negative 1, you can switch places. And that's what we're doing here. And so your answer must be pretty much presented like this without the minus, because the minus could be absorbed into the denominator. Right? This is not a wrong answer, the first one. It's just not simplified fully. Okay, okay let's focus on this problem. This looks a little uh, lengthy. Doesn't matter. We have the tools in our tool bag to handle this. 3n squared over n squared minus 4n. I changed the division to multiplication and I flipped the second fraction. So n squared minus 7n plus 10 all over 9n squared minus 45n. Okay. All right, now let's do a little plan here. This is a monomial, so we're good. No worries there. Now this is a binomial. There are two terms. So if it's a binomial, you have, um, you have to look for other things. Is there a GCF or is there a difference of square situation? Well, I see the difference. I, d I do see the square, right? So there is some promise there, but I do see n and n. So this one has GCF that needs to be pulled out. Once you pull out the GCF, see if difference of squares will kick in. Okay, so I'm writing the clues there. Then I come over here. This is a, a trinomial. It's a trinomial. Then again, we have GCF that we need to think about, uh, BC or AC method. So I clearly don't see the uh, GCF like I could see in the uh, binomial down here. You could see the GCF. Here I don't see the GCF, so you can go directly to the BC method. Then down here, it's a binomial, two terms. I see the difference and I do see the square. So difference of squares in my mind, but I do also see a room for GCF to be pulled out. So once again, I write GCF and difference of squares. Sometimes when you pull out the GCF, as we did in those practice problems uh, in that section, when you pull out the GCF, it will reveal to you if difference of squares still matters or not. Okay? Sometimes it can be lost because of the way it's pulled out. Sometimes it makes it even clearer after it's pulled out. So we're going to determine that right now. We have a plan, so now let's go ahead. 3n squared remains 3n squared. Here I'm going to factor out the GCF. The GCF is n, so that becomes n squared minus 4. See there, n squared minus 4 makes it very explicit that I could actually use difference of squares. So I'm going to do that in one more step though. And then this one is going to be BC method, right? It's going to look like that. n plus or minus something, n plus or minus something. And then here, down here, I have um, GCF to pull out. In fact, uh, between the numbers, 9 is common. Between the letters, n is common. So 9n is pulled out. So that gives me an n minus 5. Look at that. When I pulled out the GCF, the difference of squares was lost, right? Because there is no square. I only see the minus 5, but there is no n squared. So in fact, that technically is, has taken care of my binomial. I don't have to do one more step of difference of squares like I will have to do here. Okay, here difference of squares because I see the difference and the squares. Here, no difference of squares. All right. So now let's um, really put them, polish them completely. So n times difference of squares means n plus 2, n minus 2 times, let's see what happens here. So I have a 10 there, okay, um, and I need a negative 7. So minus 5 and minus 2 would be the two numbers, right? So minus 5 minus 2 multiplies to a positive 10, but they add up to a negative 7. So that will be n minus 5, n minus 2. And this one was already simplified as 9n times n minus 5. Again, for variety, I'm going to keep it as it is. Before I shove them together, I'm going to keep it as it is and cross-cancel. Just, just for variety. 
So you can see that it's okay to do that. Three times one is three, three times three is nine. Then I have the n and the n squared. The n squared, the, the power two is on the top. So I will do the subtraction on the top. So two minus one is one, so that is an n. But you notice that this n has a matching n down here. So that is also being canceled off. See, you can see a lot of things happening. This is why only if you feel advanced about this, that you will try to do this. Otherwise, I re recommend that you shove them together, split them up individually, make your n squared as n times n and, and all that, and then cause cancel. This is to appeal to those students who feel comfortable about doing this. Okay. So we got the n minus fives that we're matching. We got the n minus twos that we're matching. All right. So go through your, your um, mess here and see what is left over. In fact, everything on the top got canceled off. That means we're left with a one, not a zero. We're left with a one on the top. And at the bottom, we have a number three and n plus two. That's it. So we look at our answer and we see if we can simplify this any further. No, we don't have a minus to absorb or we don't have anything to further cross cancel because we took care of all of that. So this is our final answer. We'll box it. And this will be our response to factorizing. All right, I hope that helps you. And I will see you in the next section. Take care.